<laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Uh, my win for the week is that I'm, um, I'm, I'm really studying. I'm really studying again. So I'm enjoying the process. I'm, in, I'm really enjoying the process of, of everything right now. I enjoy living in a new country. I enjoy studying mental discipline again. Um, I enjoy dancing in new ways, exploring new, new, new patterns. Uh, training in a different way, so I'm I'm just enjoying. I'm really really enjoying being a student. <clears throat> so that's definitely my way for the week. And today we're gonna talk about a subject that is very that I've been faced with a lot recently. And again, every time I, so when I say that I study mental discipline, it's 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 a subject like mental discipline for me is a subject or it's it's not even a subject it's an um, it's um, it's a practice like mental discipline is a practice for me it's like yoga it's a practice like dancing is a practice you can't master salsa you know what I mean you can't master bachata like you can't master hip hop like how 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 are you going to do that like how are you going to master a culture first of all. So for me, mental discipline is the same thing. So when I say when I'm back at studying, it's like I'm studying my old books. I'm studying my mind a lot more. So even if I'm not sitting down and meditating twice per day right now, I replaced one. So I still do one meditation per day. That's the bare minimum. But one now I'm reading a lot more. And I'm just hearing my thoughts a lot. It's going to sound like hippie talk right now. So I'm letting you guys know, be with me and bear with me this entire presentation I'm going to have. Because fear and mental discipline, it might sound a little bit up in the air until everything just falls down together, right? So, one of the, uh, one of the things, right, that, that I think about a lot is the past. I love history. Like, I really, I really do appreciate reading history. And I believe the reason why I love reading history is because you get to ask yourself why a lot of times. Like, why did people do that? I saw a photo today of, um, of a little kid from Africa, I believe it was Congo, from 1965, sitting in a cage. And next to her, she was sitting in a cage, she was maybe two, three, something like that. Next to her was two was two kids from, I believe, Belgium. And the interesting thing with it is just, but why? Because those kids that are sitting there next to her, they are not, that's not evil kids. You know what I mean? They're kids. They are also, they were like five. They're just product, products of their environment. So they're not evil per se. So I'm, I'm just so fascinated by history and you, you hear it a lot, like history always repeats itself. And I'm fucking terrified that what we are witnessing right now is that history is repeating itself. I'm, I'm, that shit keeps me up, you know what I mean? That keeps me uh, up at night, really, really, really. Um, but before, before I continue, I just want to, and I think that's one of like the main things why I'm so passionate about, even if it's, I've done this mental, I've done this webinars when there were two people, I've did it when we were 80 people, and I will keep doing it if it's 8,000 or one. Because if one person hear what we are saying and talking and hearing, just going online here and hearing where everybody's from and sharing our wins and being, doing this collective togetherness, I truly believe there's something magical to it. You know what I mean? I truly believe that this is the evolution that we are all uh, supposed to be part of. So I just want everybody to write your, where you live, or not even where you live, I want to hear your heritage also. Where do you live in your heritage? Because we are a global, worldwide movement. So I'm gonna read those and then we're gonna talk even more about fears and why it's so important. Because I can, 
when I'm talking about what I'm, when I'm hearing these thoughts, right? Like I saw that photo today and it really got me thinking. It's like, fuck, it's like, where are we going? Where are we going as a, as a, as a planet? Like where, where are we really going as a, as a planet right now together? Are we going back to the 60s? It's like, we're gonna start putting kids in cages again? Or are we moving forward? But even if I'm getting terrified of what I'm seeing, I can start to, I can use that as fuel or I can use that to cripple me. I can thrive from it or I can cripple me. And going online here and um, seeing and speaking and just sharing our thoughts with each and every single one here is, uh, is just a, it's a proof that you can use that as fuel. And that's what I want us all to talk about. Do I, do I pronounce that word correctly? Fuel, is that how I say it? Yeah, good. <laughs> Aight. This is where everybody's from. You can say what you want about the world right now, but I'm, I truly believe that our dance-specific movement are creating a good and beautiful impact on the world. And here's the reason why. We have people that are Greek slash Australian, but living in the States. People that are originally from Finland, living in Vienna, Austria. We have people that are Germany, from Germany, that are living in Germany with a Latin heart. <laughs> Italian that lives in Sweden. We have people that are born in, in Lisboa, that moved with Cape Verdean parents and lived in Norway, or is living in Norway. People from uh, Puerto Rico, but living in Tallahassee, Florida. And Borussia, I don't, even, I don't even know where Borussia is. I'm guessing with my ignorant ass that it's Central America. Oakland, California, and, half, and Filipina, a Filipina-American. Spanish heritage with Moroccan blood, African blood, Italian, and UK. <laughs> Wow. Germany and Germany, but living abroad for over a decade. Peruvian, but living in, in Japan. Born and living in Panama and half Jamaican. Germany, Macedonia. No, Macedonian, living in Germany and Dominican in USA. Round of applause for our international movement, everyone. That was hard for me to even read out loud. And an extra round of applause for me for reading that with dyslexia. <laughs> If you don't know how scared I was, how scared I was as a kid reading out loud. Like, I swear on my life, reading out loud was one of my biggest fears. Reading out loud in school was one of my biggest fears. And we have people from Lebanon also I saw right now. Maybe, well, maybe I uh, said it out loud. But again, you can... It, this, it's going to be an interactive webinar today. I'm letting you guys know. Prepare... I want to know where, what's your, what's your, what's your biggest fear right now? What's your biggest fear right now in this very moment? Take a thinker and type it out while I'm, while I'm talking, all right? What's your biggest fear right now? Because fear, it's always going to be there. I truly believe that fear will always Nobody's fearless, you know what I mean? That's an illusion. That's an illusion. Nobody's fearless. You will always have fears. But then what I said, right? You can let it cripple you or you can use it as fuel. And it's very, very important to be able to use fear as fuel. Sometimes you need to follow your fears and let fear lead the ways. And sometimes you need to listen to your fears and fucking run. <laughs> because there is some danger coming in your way. <laughs> I'm gonna read this part. Here we go. I'm obviously not gonna read everybody anyone's name, right? Not finishing my project on time. Not managing my paperwork on time. Getting the job at the interview this Friday. Lose my job. Dying too young. Not finding a job in the country I live and being pushed 
uh, to move again to another place. The fact that I don't know what triggers my anxiety, that I can't protect my children from this world, to lose focus on my goals, fear another Trump slash Republican presidency. These are real fears, right? Like all of those are real fears. A lot of them are based on internal pressure. Internal pressure. A lot of them are, are things like pressure you're putting on yourself. But then also there are things that are external factors, like external pressure that we know that you cannot control. And when I say that, like, I hear all of these things too. I get like all of those fears, <laughs> I probably have all of them. I probably have a little bit of all of them. But the thing with it is that you can't let it, you can't let it, you can't let it cripple you. You, you really cannot, you really cannot let it cripple you. Like that's when you need to put extra pressure on yourself. And it sounds like crazy talk. I know what it, I know it sounds crazy, but it just, I, I, I give you all the empathy. I give you all the empathy in the world for your fears because we all have our own fears, right? And if you keep reading, like a lot of these fears are, they're repeating themselves, right? I think the first two, three fears is just fear of running out of time. And what is that? That's like, that's when you're overthinking. And overthinking, overthinking, gives, uh, overthinking takes you to procrastination. And procrastination keeps you away from the done next mentality. Not good enough. I'm scared that I, I'm not good enough to be able to protect my children from this world that we're existing in. Not getting to the top. All of these things are, they manifest in, in you. They manifest in you, right? And as much as it's, it's, I don't believe this to be good advice, but I believe it's the only advice or the only way, it's not even advice, you know what I mean? I, I just believe it's the only way to truly cope with it. I believe it's the only way to truly cope with it. I'm terrified, you know what I mean? Some of the things I'm terrified of. Having my, my family, you know? Creating my own family, if that would ever be a situation of mine. That thing scares me. You know, not living up to my, like, I don't, I truly believe that, like, this is what I do. I, I you know, I work. I, I share my thoughts and uh, it's just a reflection of what I see. We work, we track our times here, how much we're working. We work 12 hours per day, like a minimum. So from the moment I open my eyes, I do my 30 minute morning routine until 30 minutes before I go to bed, I work. And I've been doing that for I don't know how many years. And I still don't feel that I reach my fullest potential. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm in bed thinking like, how can I do this better? How can I do this harder? So that's, it's, it's a done next mentality. It's a done next mentality that pushes me towards my fears. So I'm constantly facing them. I'm constantly facing them. It's like, what am I scared of? How can I approach that? Try to understand it. Because what I, but what I don't believe in, and I don't want anybody to be crippled that, be crippled of, it's fear of failure. Fear of failure. Because it costs way too much. Like that, the cost of fear of failure, it has such a high price, and it comes with interests also. It comes with interest. And then you have interest on interest effect. It's a double, it's like a triple spending, you know what I mean? 
I just said I, I'm, I'm, I'm until today not comfortable reading out loud. And you can almost hear it on my voice when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, uh, when I'm reading. When I'm reading. You don't hear me being super comfortable speaking out loud, right? Or, or reading out loud. But it costs too much. If that's going to cripple me from becoming who I want to be, holding these webinars, spreading this message, taking this information out that I'm constantly receiving and just giving it out, then it costs me to be who I want to be. It cost me my movie ending. And that cost me fulfillment. It cost me pleasure. It costs me, it, it cost me joy, just time. Like imagine I did, I started video blogging 2016, I believe. Earlier, earlier, earlier. I believe I have a video blog somewhere from like 2015, 2014, something like that. But I was just way too scared, way too scared to put it out, way, way too scared. But imagine what I would be now. Imagine how, where this movement would be right now. But so that's the cost. That's the cost, right? If you want to be a great dancer, but, you have, but you're scared of rejection, just think about that cost. Think about that, it's a tremendous cost. How many good dances have you missed out on? How many, how many um, shows have you been missing out on? How much pleasure and fun and joy and happiness have you been missing out on? And then imagine how, much, how that seeps into other areas of your life. If losing focus on your goal or not finding a job in the country where you're living in or not being able, not knowing where to trigger your anxiety or scare, fear of dying junk, if that's your fears, just imagine how many, how many other areas of your life that seeps into. You know, it's the same, like... <coughs> David, David got shocked here because I'm, <coughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spitting so much knowledge, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, just imagine how many, just imagine how many other areas of your life it seeps into. Imagine if I was scared of always coming up with new things, always coming up with new things. I know that a lot of the principles I'm, I'm talking about repeats itself, but it's. For me, I, I believe that to be a good thing. You know what I mean? I believe that to be a good thing. That again, I, again I'm talking about circles and things coming in and just affecting, affecting other areas of your life. Because I'm not lying. <laughs> Imagine if I said new shit every day. I mean, did that make sense? Like it made, it made total sense in my head at least. Because fear, right? Fear is gonna, like I said in the beginning, I hear fear, I hear it, I hear it as much as you guys do. If not more, probably, if not more. But I just refuse to let it cripple me. Like it can't hold you back. It can't hold you back. It just can't. Again, I hear it, I feel it, I feel the pain of, I feel your fears, like I can, almost like as it's being tangible. But if you let that control you, the cost is gonna be way too big. It's gonna be way, way too big. Because fear, it leads you to the, to what if. Fear leads you to what if. And most of us don't have fears, right? Like we have concerns. Concerns is something that you manifest. You plant them inside of here. You planted that shit inside of here. Fears is something that controls you. Did that make sense? There's difference there. 
fear is, not, if fear is something that controls you. Concerns, however, is something that you plant up here. I was so concerned that people would judge me for not being, for not being a good reader, that I hold back like my number one, what I believe to be one of my number one gifts in life for so many years, just because I was terrified of it. You know, people, they say like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. You know, if I do something, it needs to be perfect. That could be your biggest blessing or your biggest curse. Because a perfectionist is so concerned with everything being perfect. That then comes a, a crazy guy like me, have to do something and give it a try. I, I try something, I throw it out there, I get feedback from the community, I change it, I make it better, I throw it out again. I get feedback from the community, I change it, I make it even better, throw it out again. I've done three, I've done three test products before a person who is a perfectionist even pulls the trigger. While that perfectionist is probably more certified than I am. And I know some of you guys are in the same position here. You're not scared, you've concerned. Sometimes we're scared, make no mistakes, but it's a difference. Know, and know the difference. Because fear, right? Fear is the fight against yourself that you need to win. Because fear is going to bring you to what if. What if this happens? What if I did that? What if I say this and that person responds with that? But then you remove if. Remove the if and plan for it. What if I ask this dancer to dance with me and he rejects me? Then you plan for it. Then you're gonna smile. <laughs> you're really not gonna give a fuck. <laughs> Cause it's not really gonna affect your life. And then you go back and then you smile and you're hanging right now with your friends. You have an amazing night and fuck it. I had my best dances, probably, probably some of my, or like, not even probably, my best dances are with amateurs. People that just don't really care, like, if you dance with an artist, at least me, I feel pressure, <laughs> that artist feel pressure, so it's just like, it's not always a, a good synergy, but if you dance with somebody who is like, I don't give a shit, I'm just here to have fun, for me at least, I enjoy it more. So you always plan for if. What if I don't make it on time? My fear is that I don't uh, finish my uh, project or my papers on time. Plan for it. Plan for it. What's the worst that can happen? If you don't finish your papers on time, what's the worst thing that can happen? This is going to happen. Okay, cool. Plan for it. Or... Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing with my method. <laughs> Here's the thing where I stand with this. The more you hang with me, the more you're gonna understand that I'm... <laughs> One part of me says, yeah, plan for it. What's the worst thing that can happen? That, that's one tactic I have. But then I have that other voice inside of my head, my dark side, that I, I get excited just by talking about that motherfucker. <laughs> I get excited just talking about that guy because he says, okay, if I have a project, if my life depended on it, could I finish the project? I probably could finish the project if my life depended on it. Yeah, okay, but let's go then. You know what I mean? Let's go. Why? Because you get what you got to have. You get what you got to have. No, you don't get shit. You get what you got to have and you go and take it. But it's a dichotomy there. And you have to understand that dichotomy. Because you can't go that heavy all the time. But if it really matters to you, I promise you you're going to get that. 
I promise you, you're gonna do. If you refuse to let your fears cripple you and let and use that shit as fuel, you're going to get there. I pro it's inevitable. Yeah, you sure? Thank you, Luz. I was concerned. I'm glad you're having your headphones on because I know there are, you know. Lou started hearing me cursing. She's like, shit, there's gonna be one of those webinars. Let me grab these headphones. My, my, my grandchildren are gonna report me to, I don't know, I don't even know what, what that, what that, what is it called? Custody, like custody control or whatever that's called. She's like, shit, let me, let me put this shit up. <laughs> Yo, you can let fear fuel you. I tell you, there is ways to do it. But it's a dichotomy and it's a risk, right? So you have to understand it's like when to go, when to put pressure and when to go for it. Because I rather have not, I rather have, I rather have 10 no's than one what if. You know what I mean? That, that, that's, I'd rather have 10 no's or 45 no's even than what if, than one what if. Like what if keeps you awake, I tell you. What if keeps you awake? That's the shit that's gonna haunt you in your dreams. It's like what if I did that? Do you know how many, like do you know how many professional dancers that was laughing at me for my idea? about this community before I did it. Like, I'm, one day I'm gonna drop all the names. <laughs> but not now, <laughs> now is not the day. <laughs> now is not the day. But sometimes it's like, because I'm so, I've been so blessed with hanging out with like the top of the top of the top of the top when it comes to dancers in multiple styles, multiple styles. Hip hop, popping, like most of the funk styles, Latin, like I had people laughing at me for my idea. And it's not even an idea, it was a vision. Like this was never an idea, an idea is something like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> no, 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 I had a vision like clear as ice, you know what I mean? Friends of mine, friends of mine, people I still fuck with, you know what I mean? People that are still in my life. But if I let them poison my, my thoughts with their fears, or, and that would be concerns, all of those things were concerns in my head already. It was things that I put up here. But if I let their concerns become my fears, then their, their concerns would or that fear would control me. But you need to, and here's how you overcome it. Here's how you overcome fear. Me, overcoming fear. I believe this is so important. And it's gonna sound crazy that it's like, it's not that easy. It's like, give me, give me two seconds. I don't know if I should jump into thought control before. I'm reading my, I'm reading my, uh, my uh, lecture at the same time, but I don't know if I'm gonna. All right. <laughs> Before we talk about how to overcome fear, we're gonna come there. I want to, I want to address this first. You need to understand, and you need to know that you control what's up here. You control the topics that are happening up here, and that's thought control. We talk about that in the mental discipline program. I want to do a whole, I want to do a whole course on thought control and thought control only. I believe that thought control is the most important skill anybody can have. I believe that my lack of thought control caused me to have panic anxiety. My inability to listen to my own thoughts and listen to my higher self, like what, what, what is truly happening up here, is the main reason why I was, had panic anxiety, depression for, for tons of years. 
and you can control it. You can really control it. And I believe that fear is like an addiction. I believe fear is like an addiction. It's like you have to replace that addiction with another addiction. You have to replace one addiction with another addiction. I've had tons of addictions. More than you guys know. From an early age. And I believe addiction can be good. But I've had some really, some, <laughs> some really not so good ones. I smile when I say it, but <laughs> it's dark, you know? But fear is an addiction too. So you can replace that. Panic anxiety, I believe it's an addiction too. And you can replace that. And there is ways to do it. There is true ways to do it. And I believe that one of the ways is to repeat until it becomes your instincts. Like repeat something until it becomes your instincts. It's a great saying from Tim Grover. And he said that everyone can see in the light. I can move this and see this in the light. I can do this in the light. Awesome. But very, very few. Everybody can see in the light, but to conquer your fears, you must be able to feel your way around in the dark. And that is, it needs to be able to be so second nature to you, for you to be able to access, to go there. I've run over, someone has their mic on. Who has their mic That's on? That's me, sorry. Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Like, I ran over, I had a comeback for every racist comment on the planet. Every racist comment on the planet. If that person say this, I'm going to say that. If that person say this, I'm going to do that. But I repeated those thoughts so much in my mind that it was, it, it, it came to a point of cripple me. It's like I started, I started hearing Everybody was all of a sudden a racist. All of a sudden, everybody was a racist. But that's not the truth. So for me to be able to feel my way in the dark there, I need to be so confident in myself, in my abilities, to verbally express myself, or physically defend myself, depending on where you live. And for me, it was to physically defend myself. That's where I'm from. And here is how you, here is how you, what we talk, I, I really, really wanted to touch about thought, touch on thought control, because it's really what, it's what it is. It's like, it's about staying sharp. It's like, don't get ready, stay ready. I know it sounds a little bit up in the air. And we're gonna train together after to get some endorphins out to release this subject, but I, I, I feel it's such a pity to let this cripple you. Here's an exercise I want everybody to do today. Not everybody, because some of you guys need to go to bed, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sandra Niveta, Lord knows what time it is over in Japan and in, and in Panama. <laughs> you know, it can be. Psh. Nobody knows. So, you have your movie ending, right? You have wealth, health, wealth, love, and happiness. You know your fears. Write down one fear from each of the, of the four pillars. Not making enough money to support my family. Not being that my health will cripple me when time comes. That I won't find the love of my life. That I won't feel happiness with, my, with the job I'm having right now. And whatever fear, right? And then you write, that's one list, that's one column 
or whatever it's called in English. And then you have another part. And then it says, you write, the cost of inaction. And in each of the categories you write, six months, or write, sorry, write one year, three months, three years, and six years. What's the cost of inaction here? How much will it really cost me? Worst case scenario. Because worst case scenario when it comes to cost of inaction is usually the one that is the right one. What will it cost you? What will it cost you to, to not take action on this? Emotionally, physically, financially, spiritually, you know, fulfillment. What will it cost you? Like, physically, what will it cost you to not take care of your health? You know, this is my fear. And that fear is holding me back in, that fear is holding me back in this pillar. My fear of X, Y, X is holding me back in the health pillar. My fear of Y is holding me back in the love pillar. My fear of fill in the blanks is holding me back in fill in the blanks. And what is the cost of inaction there? It's such an important question to ask yourself because that shit should scare the, that shit should fuel you. Like that should be fuel for you. Like it should really put like, Jesus Christ is like, I have this fear and it's holding me back on so many levels. No, no, no. Jet ski, you know what I mean? Papa wheelie. Like that, that should that should fuel you, you know. <laughs> like I, I have to throw in some bad jokes because because this is serious. I, I get emotional when about this subject. I swear to you, I get emotional. Because again, it's not even fears, it's concerns, it's shit that you put in there. It's you, my biggest fear is that I, uh, that I will, that my parents will, won't, won't, be, won't be proud of me. You can't please everyone. You can't please everyone. You're not here to please everyone. I'm more concerned about myself than my parents. My parents love me, I hope. If they don't, they don't. It's none of my concerns. I'm gonna do my absolute best to be the best version of me. I'm gonna do the absolute best to be the best version of Sebastian. I'm gonna be ha do everything that I like to do. Spread as much happiness as I can, laugh as much as I can, party as much as I can, work as much as I can. You know what I mean? Live life on all cylinders. Then, if, then I'm, I hope my parents love me. But if they don't, they don't. Easier said than done, I get it. And of course, that's gonna come with, with regrets and heaviness and doubting myself, blah, blah, blah. But that can't be my main focus. That can't be a fear that's going to, to cripple you. You know? I believe that most of the fears, like they are learned, you know what I mean? Like these are fears that are learned inside of you. You learn to be scared about it. Let me mute people when they come in. All new participants muted. Boom. I believe that fears are learned. You know, look at kids. You look at kids. You see kids. They there. They they do all the crazy shit. I saw dance videos of myself. I used to do. I used to run and do like I don't know what it's called, but like you dive, you take a jump, and I'm a big guy, so I jump high. You know what I mean? I'm Sebastian. So I jump. I land on my head and do like a rollover. I don't know what that's called. Sprinting, jumping, rollover. From stage. 
from stage, jumping down from stage, landing on my shoulder, roll up, boom, show continues. Like I would never do that shit right now. I will never do it. Why? Because I'm, I have so much concerns. <laughs> I have so much concerns. I know what's going to happen if I do it. You know what I mean? So in some cases, like, you need to let fear stop you. But in other cases, you need to let fear fuel you. And in dealing with fear, it's like, you need to think less and listen more. Listen, really, stop thinking. Listening more what's happening is like what is really happening up here and then act on what fears you most of the times and then you notice Then you stop if it sucks or You take action You notice the results You stop Notice even more And if you don't like the results you pivot you keep moving. You stop, you pivot, you keep moving. Everybody says learn from your mistakes. I suggest we all learn from our fears because there are truth in there. There are truth about ourselves in there. Why are you scared about the world for your, for your children? Why are you scared you're not gonna get that job when you know you're good enough? You know you're a good enough person to, to provide to the rest. You know you're a good enough person to provide value for whatever. Why are you gonna lose focus on your goals? Why, why is that even a fear of yours? You know you can stick to a goal, you proved it to yourself before. You prove to yourself time and time again that you can, that you can, um, that you can stick to a goal. Why is that a fear of yours? That should fuel you. Familia, let me know what has been the most helpful with this webinar. I know it was a little up in the air, but try talking about fears for an hour. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> I dare you to talk about fear for, for an hour without going a little bit up in there. <laughs> I tell you. I tell you, I tell you. What has been the most helpful with this? If anything, if anything. There is no limits in your mind unless you put in. Making me think about the cost of inaction was really helpful. Substituting an addiction with another addiction. It's true, I tried it and it works. Don't allow fear to cripple us. And it's so hard, I know it's so hard. It's easier said than done, I get it. It's easy for me to sit here and say it, but if you don't practice it, you're not going to, to, to be able to get there. If you don't practice, you're not going to be able to get there. I promise you that much. Prepare for the worst case scenario. All right, Familia. We have... Let me... Guys, I got a serious question, though. I love to talk about this shit. Like, I truly enjoy teaching this type of uh, subject. Not only like fear, but things that can make us as a collective move forward. But is this of interest? Or would you rather hear me talk about five ways to lose body weight? Three steps to eat your favorite foods without going without gaining weight or would you rather have me talk about like mental discipline 
the cost of inaction. Did that make sense? Like, that's a serious question. I can talk about both, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. But I prefer mental discipline. But what I, what I prefer is, uh, is unimportant unless it provides value. Because I speak, I feel I speak so much about like five steps to go in, you know, all of all of those things. I like I, I, if you want to hear more about it, I talk about it every day on my social media. I feel, you know, mental fitness, mental discipline, brain-related stuff. A combination of both would be good. Mental discipline for me, this is more helpful. Mental discipline, got it. Mental discipline is, it's shaking. All right, Amelia, that's it. Gonna round up. I'm gonna um, say bye dancers. You're gonna say four dancers. Then I need like five minutes maybe. Then get ready and we're gonna work out for you guys who want. If you can't join, don't worry about it. This webinar will be posted on Coach Sebastian, I believe, YouTube channel. And we're gonna post it uh, in the Facebook group so you can read it whenever, or listen to it again whenever you want. Um, any questions before, by the way? Sorry, I've been talking shitloads. Do you have any questions I should jump into? If not, we're just gonna keep on going. Have fun, I will miss the workout. This is way more important than diet, etc. Anybody can do the math, but this is what allows people to do it. No diet will ever work without you being in control. Speaking facts, speaking mad facts right now, I love it. For that provides more value than the step to get to X stuff. Here we go. I'm gonna say bye dancers, you're gonna say for dancers, I'm gonna unmute all of you. If you have any questions, just let me know. Don't, I'd gladly answer them. Slide in my DM or something along those lines, you know what I mean? <laughs> for sure that's a loose place. <laughs> for sure that's a well a loose place. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Familia, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for coming. We keep talking about mental discipline and mental fitness and just resiliency overall. Thank you so much for being here. It makes my life a lot better. Remember, as always, by dancers. dancers. We're dancers. We're dancers. Let's get dancers. it. <laughs> I don't know who that delay was, but I love it. Alright, Familia, talk to you very soon, alright?